you know it. It's about that time. We're going to get this thing started. <laughs> I see a few people rolling in. I am getting settled in myself. Photography by Milana. Ooh, cool. Do that. Do that. Low budget show. High caliber guest. Today's another day. Let me get my low budget self together. Because it's time to bring in our guest today, the Manifold Mind. Unlock your destiny. Raven is here. Uh, let's do this. There she is. There she is. I see huh? you. Can you see me? Can you hear me? All the above. <laughs> I'm getting all settled in because I spent the night and part of yesterday binge watching your stuff. <laughs> and I think I'm getting a better understanding about narcissism by watching your stuff. I'm just watching everybody roll in here. Um, you're... Um, are you experiencing good weather over there where you are? We actually are. The thunderstorms just started. We had tornado watches um, yesterday. I'm in Houston right now. So we just started having some thunderstorms and things like that. So apologies ahead of time. Yes. All right. So we uh, are troopers here because no matter what happens, we try to go right through no matter what. So I have been anticipating having you on the show quite a bit. Um, this, of course, is a family project on my end, so we were looking forward to uh, having you on the show. Uh, I have too much to talk to you about, so I'm going to try to have some self-control and uh, start <laughs> at one point and then let you take over. So for all of those who have never got a chance to meet you, uh, uh, tell them, please, who you are and what you do and what you're all about. Yeah, um, well, my name is... I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I um, am the owner of the Manifold, the Manifold Mind Life Coaching uh, a company, and I also have a nonprofit. It's called Ashes to Beauty. I help people who are in every stage of narcissistic abuse. So whether you just found out that you're dealing with a narcissist and maybe you're trying to leave the narcissist or maybe you're going to court with a narcissist or maybe you you now recognize you grew up with a narcissist and you're uh, wanting to recover from that, I help people in every stage of their of their life uh, and in the process of understanding what narcissism is and recovery from it, kind of um, make peace with what has happened to them, find purpose in their pain, and move forward from there. That that uh, that's the show, everybody. We're done. <laughs> so that was that was. <laughs> I have never. First of all, I normally don't do that. I don't say you know who you are and we do that, which you just did. And because people normally uh, don't do it the way you just did it. That was excellent. That was absolutely, there's nothing else for me to say. And you got uh, a hi, uh, shout out to you there. And a hello and a few others. Bernice2713 uh, uh, said hello. Uh, mommy uh, J. Uh, uh, that's Sarah. Sarah Lopez is, is talking to you there. Uh, I yeah. have to read that, of course, for all of those who will watch this back later. You were going to say something. Go ahead. You were going to say no, it's just good to see see you, Sarah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, um, says, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you, and um, yeah, and and hopefully we we help some people while we chat. Yeah, she uh, Sarah says, uh, looking beautiful as always, Angel. Uh, thank you so much for helping me throughout my recovery with your content. Uh, she pretty much sums up why uh, I stumbled across your page because I'm always looking for people to help my audience, um, mm. which my audience is predominantly, um, I'd say about 65% of them are beginning their journey. They're, they're not, they're not uh, people who know quite a bit about it. So um, you are a true treasure. Uh, I was addicted to looking at your page. I had to put it down because you have so many great posts on your page. Please tell everybody your, your Instagram page one more time again, please. Yeah, it's the underscore manifold underscore underscore mind. That's my Instagram page. My YouTube channel is just my name, um, Angel J Storm PhD. 
and I have I have a Facebook page as well, the Manifold Mind, at on Facebook. Okay, so uh, when the show is over, everybody, uh, including you, Matt, I see that you gave a hello to everybody here. Uh, Matt, a uh, great guest that I had and a great book that you have out. Everyone that's here, please pay attention to the comments once this show is uploaded and we're done because I'm going to ask my kind and very intelligent, beautiful guest to uh, go into the comments, uh, Angel, when we're done here and uh, put all that information in. And don't be surprised if everyone starts to use that uh, as a chat, by the way. So if you need to reach out to her, uh, you'll be able to do so. I wanted to do a lot of what I've just done because I am going to now jump into this uh, the way I had in mind to do. And here we go. If you don't mind, let's do this. Red flags are a common conversation in the community of people who are trying to protect themselves against selfish, self-absorbed, narcissistic people. Your perspective and the help that you provide when it comes to that discussion of red flags, what is it that you can say that you think of when you hear the term red flag? Yeah, so um, a lot of times we think about what red flags are in terms of behavior, in terms of words, but it's also what isn't said. It's also what isn't done. And those are just as important um, red flags. The absence of those things can be red flags as well. And um, just for just really quick for for um, some examples here, uh, let's say that they seem to lack empathy, right? You're telling a story and it's something that's super emotional for you, but they're it's like they didn't even hear you and they've moved on to something that focuses around them and how they feel and how they or or you're sharing something with them and they turn it around and talk about themselves in in that same sentence. Right. So instead of. Um, being there for you in your grief or celebrating with you, they've turned it now into something that focuses around them. Um, and I'm talking about being extremely selfish, extremely self-centered. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk about the differences between a narc and a jerk, right? Because there's, there's big differences there. Um, but it's, it's being extremely suspicious of other people's motives and intentions, even for small things. Um, you, mean, not, you mean they're you mean they're like that, right? You mean they're like, they're right. suspicious. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, they're got it. Poorly suspicious. So um, instead of instead of assuming that somebody, if you want to have coffee with them, instead of just assuming, okay, this person wants to have coffee with me, there's a, always an alter, ulterior motive there, right? This person wants to have coffee with me because A, B, and C, or they're hoping that I tell A, B, and C, or they want to get A, B, and C from me. So there's always more to what meets the eye and usually it has to do with a more grandiose picture of themselves they view themselves as somebody that everybody wants to know everybody wants to be around everybody wants in their circle and so therefore they are extremely paranoid about the motives of people who are connecting to them and um Again, more than more than uh, one other thing, one other big red flag is that they stonewall ideas that uh, are not theirs. So if somebody else has an idea or a way to approach something, they will stonewall it if it was not originally their idea, even if it was the best outcome for that situation. So it's just important to recognize these things. What I often tell my clients is that you'll recognize them instead of memorizing a list of a hundred yes. things, right? Or yes. memorize the list of 50 things that are not there or not present. What I try to get people to come back to is their center, what I, what I call their center, their baseline. <clears throat> okay. Learn how it feels in the moment when, when for example, the, you're being ignored. Something important is being talked about and you're not, um, they're not addressing you. They're moving mm -hmm. on to something else focuses about themselves. Pay attention to your gut instincts. Most people who end up with narcissists or people with narcissistic tendencies have lost touch with their true self. They don't recognize what it feels like to be off of their center. And so that prolongs the, the environment that they stay in, the relationship that they stay in, and, and the things that they permit to happen within that context. So understanding yourself, learning your baseline, coming back to center, yeah. all of these things are super important. It's more important than memorizing a list of things that, that people do, it, right? Because, it, because 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. Hey, come on now. You're the diva of the day. Every, nobody comes here to watch me. I tell you, they'll, they'll, they'll type it out in a minute. They'll tell me, Paxton, can you please shut up? Can you please shut up and let the doctor talk? So, 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 so doc, all, I, all I was going to say was this. If someone doesn't have a baseline, mm -hmm. they didn't even know that a baseline was a part of the, the equilibrium mm -hmm. of human existence. They're in trouble, right? Right, which is, which, and that being said, is a good point because most people don't grow up being super um, in tune with themselves, right? We kind of just go along with the routine. We're yeah. shuffled along as children. You go here, you do this, that's what you do. And you never really get to know yourself. And so that is actually the entry point for how narcissists come into our 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 lives and how they end up staying there so long before you know it the relationship looks like something that uh you know you can't even recognize how did it get this bad so even people who who don't grow up with narcissists right i'm talking about people who are just living a normal average life even people who don't have a, a, a necessarily a traumatic childhood or something tra traumatic that happens to them let's say they mm -hmm. were enough to get through 18 years of their life without that happening uh, it just isn't something that um, that most people the average person is aware of or taught or learn learns how to cultivate and so uh, what I often explain to my clients too is that the process of narcissistic abuse recovery you know we like to think of it like I'm slowly on the on, I'm just going up this mountain right like started yep. really bad but here I am you know a week later feeling great that's just not simply not how it happens. There's a lot in this, you know, physically, um, neurologically, emotionally, mentally, uh, physically that happens to heal from narcissistic abuse. The narcissist will be like a spotlight in all of these areas in your life that you didn't even know had cracks in the foundation. All of a sudden you're seeing, wow, this okay. person may also be toxic or this person might also be a narcissist. And you okay, okay, hold on a second. That was really good. I'm sorry. Time out for a second. For all the all the people in the back row like me, hold on. That was really <laughs> good what you just said. I'm just going to put a little rewind to that. You're saying it's not like I started at the bottom, I'm going to the top, week later, I'm chilling, everything's going great. We're talking about you will... We can, me, I'll pick me. I will start to see things in the recovery that I was like, hold on a second. This person, that person, this chink in my armor, I got a situation here that I never really took care of. I never saw it this way. We will see other things that has that have nothing to do with the person who discarded us or the narcissist in front of us. That's right. And actually... Um, very little of what I do is focused on the narcissist, uh, because awesome. the narcissist awesome. is going to be a narcissist. You can't make people, any person, a healthy person, a toxic person, a narcissist, you can't make anybody do what you want them to do. My, what I do as a life coach is I teach people how to live their the, the life that they're here to live, right? Whatever that means for them, whatever goals, whatever dreams that they have, whatever ideal life they want to live is all about them. It doesn't matter if there's a narcissist in the, in their, you know, um, vicinity in the mix in, in the, in the bloodlines. It doesn't matter. That's right. It doesn't matter. Um, but, but you must be willing to do the hard work then and address the issues that have been in your life this entire time, which is how the narcissist was able to get in anyway. Maybe you never noticed that you struggled with rejection or never being accepted as a child. And so the narcissist, when they come in with the love bombing, you know, it just feels so good that they are giving you attention that you ignore all of the other red flags like i had mentioned earlier maybe you just right. ignore that because you're so starved for acceptance you never had right. it before and so a lot of this stuff is about admitting where there were already foundational issues so that we can address them we can't fix anything if we think that there isn't a problem if if uh, those foundational issues were never clear to us again i'll go back to me if, if those were not clear to me and I meet someone who sees that they're not clear to me and they're not just a jerk, they literally have the intention to create havoc and disrupt peace, which is essentially what we're talking about. A narcissist, a narcissist is a person who is seeking to destroy and create the disruption in other people's lives. 
Uh, not just somebody who is ill-mannered, <laughs> hasn't been trained, and they have no common sense in the moment. We're mm -hmm. talking about someone who sees other others' faults and they want to exploit them as well as their weaknesses and pull resources. Now, remember, you're the doc. I'm just a guy with free <laughs> internet <laughs> and want to talk about this. So correct me at any time. If that's the case, mm -hmm. if that person comes into my life and I'm interacting with them, I have no idea that I'm literally showing my vulnerability in other aspects and they're looking to use that in the long run and then discard me. Is that how it works? Because remember, I, I mentioned the majority of people that watch these shows are beginners. I'm just curious. Is that how it kind of works? Or correct me, please. Exactly. Most people don't even realize that this was not a normal relationship, and especially in terms of a romantic relationship, that this wasn't a normal breakup until it's six months or a year or more later, and they can't wow. seem to get over the person, right? Because they're trauma bonded. This is an extremely sick um, um, situation, right? This is not this is not, a, and so if we try to, to use normal treatment for a normal breakup, it's never going to work because we're not actually addressing why this happened and how to heal that, that, that wound from that specific relationship. And then n let alone, you know, start, so you're trying to talk, talk about getting out of a hole, making the ground level, and then rebuilding your life from there. If you keep trying to rebuild, well, you're still in the pit. You're still in that Got hole. It. You need Got to it. come out of that. And so for a lot of people, they don't recognize, especially people who've never heard about narcissism, don't even recognize that they've been a victim of this type of abuse until much later in the process when th they are struggling and wondering why nothing is working. Maybe they changed their diet. Maybe they have included exercise into their uh, routine. They started seeing a therapist, what have you. Unless that person is, um, it, it can specifically address the issue of narcissism, you're you're going to be left spinning your wheels with all of these questions. Why did this happen to me? How could it happen? You know, all of the normal yeah. things that we do toxic rumination over, they won't right. be addressed unless somebody is, is knowledgeable about narcissistic abuse. And even then, you need to find somebody who, who specializes in narcissistic abuse recovery. There's plenty of people who can just talk to you about what a narcissist is. You need yeah. somebody who can specialize in helping you recover from that issue because ultimately what we're talking about here is rebuilding identity. I don't know. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you. This is so awesome. We have literally gone 19 minutes uh, in a few seconds and you have just in 19 minutes um, because I can look off to the side here and other people are commenting to me over here, which is different than the screen here. And they're in love with you. They literally yeah are in love with what you're saying because, especially that last part you just highlighted, uh, narcissistic abuse, excuse me, narcissistic abuse recovery coach is not just someone who talks about it. Mm -hmm. Overall, overall. Mm -hmm. You need to find right. someone that can help you recover, which is different than just someone that can highlight to you or define to you what, what just ran you over, as it were. That's right, and and so, like I said, very little about what I actually do with my clients is yeah. about the narcissist. There are times when we do talk about what the narcissist may do, especially in court situations when, okay. you know, and especially if there's custody issues or things like that. And I'll, I'll warn my clients, be prepared for the narcissist to behave this way or do this or whatever. But, but that's really to so that they equip themselves with an appropriate response should that thing come up. It, if, if I'm a whole person, okay, like let's just use a pie, for example. If I have a pie that hasn't been eaten at all, right, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. whole circle, there's, I'll notice straight away when somebody's taken a piece of the pie. But if Absolutely. I've walked around my whole life with only a quarter of the pie there or only half the pie there or yeah. even a tiny sliver of the pie, there's, there's still some spaces where people can come into my life, take something from me without me even knowing. I'm, I'm allowing a space for energy vampires to come into my life, which is what narcissists are. And if you, if you are walking around like this, before mm -hmm. you know it, you don't notice if there's another yeah. quarter of your pie missing, right? And yeah. so 
what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about identity, that whole pie, having that completed um, mm -hmm. so that you're very aware. As soon as somebody mm -hmm. comes in, as soon as you recognize, hey, I didn't give, if I choose to give to you a part of me, that's fine. That's great. If I choose to give to you my time, my energy, my advice, my right, right. whatever, right, my friendship, that's my decision. But as far as somebody coming in and stealing something from me, that's a, that's a completely different issue. And most people don't even realize that this is happening because they, they don't recognize them. they don't recognize the theft is happening. Is what you did I understand that's, that correct? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They don't recognize that they're slowly being eaten away at right. And before they know it, they don't know what pizza they like anymore, let alone how movie, to what movie, what colors they like, how yeah. to dress themselves without getting that other person's opinion, which is a joke in itself, and and other things. No, no, I'm just saying. Right. As a father of daughter, if that happened to my daughter, I'd go like, are you serious? Okay, you know how to dress yourself. I don't think you need a guy to come along and tell you how to what clothes fit. I'm sorry, go ahead. You're saying. Yeah, yes. So, so let alone, so if I don't know what I want to eat or what I want to wear, yeah. how will I know, hey, this person is toxic for me, especially because of part of the trauma <laughs> bond is that I That was good. You, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was good. If you don't know what what how to feed yourself, there's right. no way you're going to know that that person is a troublemaker and is an emotional vampire. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so, you know, it's, it's unhelpful. Part of also what I do is, you know, like I said in the beginning, t taking that pain and turning it into purpose. And one of the things that I make it very clear about is that um, I don't, I, it would be r considered rude of me even, at, let alone nonsensical for me to go up to an addict and tell them, hey, stop being an addict. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Just quit it. it That's stop pretty it. good. No, but yeah. you do all the time to people who are in um, who are in Abusive. situations where they've been abused. Yeah, yeah. We, we tell we them do, to leave. To stop. Yeah, to just leave, to just go no contact without mm -hmm. recognizing that they've been trauma bond. Is that what you're saying? Or they have areas been that. And not only are so people misunderstand trauma bond as well. Trauma bond is not just a very deep emotional attachment to someone. There's a deep chemical connection to that person. Your brain can uh, release as much as it wants neurotransmitters, hormones, and other chemicals that flood your bloodstream. These are tailor-made to you. This is So your level of dopamine, your level of serotonin, your level of Mine. oxytocin, it's your level is different, different than, than yours. Yeah. Right. It's tailor made for me. So my body has is giving me the exact amount of these things that I need to feel high, that I need to feel low. And so is yours. It's tailor made for you. Right. And yet okay. we tell people all of the time, stop doing that. They don't know that their body is making them more addicted to the nonsense in the relationship. The chaos yeah. okay. is literally addictive. And so how will they make sense of it enough to say, oh, I can't trust my feelings. I can't even trust my emotions in the way that, that like my body is responding. I feel so much anxiety or I feel so much adrenaline, right, you know, right. in this moment, they don't recognize that as, Hey, you're actually being poisoned by your own self, you, you know, and how to undo some of that so that you can get back to your normal baseline, which again is super important to recognize when you're spiking like that. But if that's your norm, if you're very high, very low, very on, very off, very hot, very cold, you don't recognize like, hey, there's there's something in the middle. <clears throat> and yeah. if you're never exposed to that, you can't very well expect people to just get back to that when they've it, probably not even been there their whole life. I was going to say they probably have never walked in the middle and had, a, <laughs> in other words, a balance, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how their caregivers were or if they were mismanaged or their environment. So they have yeah. to learn that. We're going to have to go have some more fun because I am going to, let me grab this over here, and I've got to, I'm not ignoring everybody, and I think you guys know when I'm being greedy and I'm keeping the guests to myself, but I have to look at everything that everybody's been writing since we've been talking. So let me scroll all the way back up here and go like here, and we do that. And, um, okay, here we go. Are you ready? I'm going to read a few things to you, my friend. Uh, Angel, it says here from Mommy J., uh, nine, yes, uh, I bought your Ultimate Narc Handbook and uh, am in the be be beginning uh, stages of understanding. 
doctor, your videos have been such a blessing in helping me with my trauma bond and healing journey, she says. Um, we have so many people that have come on, um, living life after divorce, Warren, others. Thank you, Warren, for being here. And uh, Perks to 70, Marissa, uh, all of you. Um, Bernice says, wow, you are awesome. And I tell you, you come into this, you come into this audience. You guys are so sweet. Uh, Sylvia is here. Sylvia says, awesome indeed. He gives you three hearts. You got clapping hands here. You got all kind of love. You had hearts across the screen. Uh, when you woke up this morning, you, know, you didn't know this was going to happen, and it's just going to build because um, at this point we've gone 26 minutes. But I want to turn attention to, um, I believe that's Bra. I'm just going to say that. Uh, you guys know that you can always put in a fake name or your real name, depending if it feels emotionally safe for you, uh, so that I don't have to call you by your Instagram name if you wish. Uh, they say, so subtle, misdiagnosed, warped situation. Add the cognitive dissonance. Uh, a number of people can get information about narcissism. Mm -hmm. it's, a common, it's a common literal lifestyle that people can develop to mm -hmm. consume, inf consume information on it. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in you because you stress the importance of recovery. Yeah, and, and actually on my channel, I, I tell you almost every single video, do not binge watch my channel. Don't binge watch my videos. Yeah. Um, so if I, uh, this is like the opposite, right? And I actually have a video where I explain this a little bit more in detail. But if I'm, if I'm sick and I'm in the hospital for something, mm -hmm. the doc, and I've had surgery, the doctor is not allowing you to just bring me in, um, a big pizza and a McDonald's and all this type of stuff, right? We know that what you consume will affect the way that you heal. And so yeah. the doctor says, you can't do that. You're not going to have that. But we do this with information all of the time. Yeah, it overloads our emotional and mental ability to process and heal. If we keep revisiting the thing that made us sick, how are we ever going to work? Again, my goal is not to focus on the disease. What I, I want people to be aware of it, absolutely. But the, but the goal of what I do is to make you healthy, help you make yourself healthy. And yeah. that can only be done when you take in information and are able to digest it and turn it into wisdom. Just because I gave you a bunch of information doesn't mean that you understand that single word that I said or how to apply it to your life. If you're just consuming information and not doing anything with it, it doesn't really pay to consume no. that information. No, and not, especially if it's percolating with a bunch of anger, resentment, and, uh, and, and it's uh, with a lot of festering uh, emotions, uh, whether justifiable or not, or ongoing or not, uh, the, the, the balanced and bottom line of life is moving on from things that are toxic and painful. Uh, we can't keep continue to gaslight uh, ourselves to the point that uh, we binge watch uh, narcissism. Uh, some people, I've had others say, you know, well, but you do a show on narcissism or you have people on and they talk about it because there are people that I want, like you, to address those who are just beginning their journey. If uh, people have become seasoned and they know how to move on, but are they healthy? Now, I address that as well. That's why, again, you're here today. Uh, it's one thing to get information at the beginning. It's something totally different to get information that can help you now recover and move forward to a healthy relationship with a healthy person. Uh, I like your mindset, but I want to ask you this. You're a very intelligent woman. And by the way, at some point, you, you, you're you going to get married, right? Uh, or, yeah, you, I just got engaged. I can't even do it. I couldn't even do it. I was trying to act like I don't know. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, the, worst, I'm the worst liar on the planet. You know what? Just tell everybody the good news. Let's just do that. Just tell everybody the good news. Go ahead. I'm just engaged. I am, you know, this is the thing, too. It's like you. Wait, hold on. You, wait. No, you can't. No, don't go doctor mode after you say it. What is okay. wrong with you? It's like yeah, talking I, to my sister. What do you You can't just like say that and then, you know, and then you're going to get totally. No, hold on. Wait, let's try it again. We're just gonna, we're, do over. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> we let that fly. Let that fly out of the room. Okay. So um, you just recently got engaged, right? I did. I just got engaged. We oh, that, are getting married. That's really. In oh, a year. Sorry, no. 
any year, any. Oh, that is. Here you go. All the little, all the little children that are trapped in my console over here. Okay, so uh, you you were going to say something else. Now go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, you know, well, you said so much just now, but um, you know, one of the things that is really important is that people understand there's there's uh, different stages of recovery, right? And when you're healthy, you should be in healthy relationships, right? There's so so a lot of times when when people just start realizing that they've been in a narcissistic relationship of one form or another, even if it's not romantic, the immediate response is to go into kind of like survival mode, which is like to shut people out and not connect with anybody because we don't know who to trust and, and all that kind of stuff, um, which I definitely understand. But, you know, going back to your, to your uh, point that you just made earlier, which is that at some point you have to recognize that that's also toxic for yourself and you're Absolutely. responsible. Absolutely. You, treat you tell others how to treat yourself, how to treat you. So if I'm treating myself badly, why on earth would I expect a stranger to treat me nicely? I'm teaching other people how to behave by the way I behave. I, I tell them what sort of behaviors are, I'm, are acceptable and that I'll tolerate and what I won't tolerate. And so if you are constantly kind of doing toxic rumination, living in the past, you're constantly fueling your hatred, your, um, you know, whatever, your anger, whatever, your obsession with the narcissist or what happened to you, you're constantly living your past. You're letting the past steal your present, which inevitably will lead to your future. You know, I tell my clients this too. If you want your past to be redeemed, if you want a different story than the thing you've lived, it's redeemed in your future. Do something different. Get to be a healthy person. Don't be a, you know what? It's not even okay to be a non-sick person. You need to be a healthy person, you know? A healthy, productive person. I, I agree with you a thousand percent, which is, you're, you're almost mentioning exactly our mission statement here when my daughters and I started this, is for people to be healthy and move forward instead of, mm -hmm. uh, would you call it toxic rumination? Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's what it's called when you rehearse something over and over. But it's 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 actually it destroys proteins in the brain. It actually has a physical effect on your brain. It causes brain damage to yourself. Okay, hold on. No, no, no. You can't just drop. You can't just drop that. Hold on. Say that one more time, please, for <laughs> all the males and and females who are dealing with this to understand that it's okay to get informed, but they could be moving toward what? What did you just call it? What's happening in the brain? Would you say brain damage? Yeah. Oh, brain damage. Okay. Hashtag brain damage. I like to, no, hashtag. That might be a line of shirt. That might be a line of shirt. You can start. You can start that and then put your website right underneath there. If they want information and you can oh, break it down. Like that. hashtag, really idea. No, yes. Take it. Hey, by the way, everybody knows, you know, I say a lot of things on my show, marketing ideas with my marketing background, but I'm telling you, if anybody steals that, I'm coming for you. That belongs to Angel. <laughs> That is her idea for her to make money. If anybody takes that, I'm looking for you. Okay, go ahead. You're going to say something. Yeah, your brain is extremely plastic, right? We know that it can – You there's never an age at which it can stop learning. If you treat your brain healthy, you will always be able to learn and do new things. The – the opposite is also true. So we can have a lifetime, literally a lifetime of healthy things occurring in the brain. You're learning things, you're trying new things, you're making all these different connections, you're thriving mentally. The narcissist comes in, anger sets in, resentment sets in. You start doing toxic rumination, you start replaying, rehashing the things that happened to you. You start thinking of these insane scenarios. Well, if they would have said this, I could have said this and I would have done that. Right? And you, you come up with, and you literally just think about these things. Your, your brain is constantly releasing chemicals. It's constantly releasing yeah. uh, ne uh, neurotransmitters. Okay, you're bathing your brain in, in toxic chemicals, which actually is the proteins that yeah. create the gray matter in your brain. And so you actually cause damage. You cause brain damage to yourself by doing that. It's not just toxic for your mental health or your emotional health. I'm talking about physically, the brain, the organ in your head, is being torn down by the thoughts you're thinking. So you have an... You're, Time you're, out. No, you can't keep... You're, you're blowing my mind. You have to stop this. You, what are you doing? Time out. Listen, everybody's rolling in. Everybody's taking this in, the stuff that's on the screen. Listen. When a person continues to do that, 
I'm just going to try to reframe it and absorb it in my head or my, mm. my audience and say it. it. When a person continues to do that, they are literally, as it were, cooking their brain in this toxic soup. Mm. Hashtag brain damage. Hashtag insane. You said insane just a moment ago. I thought that was really good. I'm just making up hashtags and T-shirts for you and mm. coffee mugs. But <laughs> so, so essentially, we are killing our own brain with the past or with this person that we've dealt with, cooking it, as it were, we're destroying the gray matter when we should be building the gray matter and building a newer life and a happier life, a healthy life. But a person may feel trapped. Uh, Sylvia on the screen here uh, says, I do that with a sad face, uh, which you're talking about. Do me a favor for a moment. Sylvia is one of our regular viewers. Talk to Sylvia for a moment. What can she do to move away from doing that? Well, recognition that this is happening is the first step in changing it. We can, Again, we can't change something that we're not aware of. And, you know, it's also important, I think, to recognize that the goal of the narcissist, when they're, when they're picking a supply, again, that can be any kind of person, a boss, a romantic partner, right. a friend, it doesn't matter. The goal of the narcissist is to basically to get you to do their job. They want you to abuse you so that they can move on and find another supply, so that they can have this network of supplies. You are taking over the narcissist's job. You're good. You're, you're good. You're good. You must start to reframe the way that you perceive what you are doing. If you don't view it as toxic, you'll continue to do it. If you view it as like this is what the narcissist's goal was the entire time and I'm not letting – that happened to me, I am ready that happened. to okay. control my life, then you can do something different. If we know what the goal was and we don't participate, it, it comes to an end. We're able to recover and move Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Yeah. The brain is extremely plastic. So, so, um, so when, when, Again, we don't want to just get to a neutral ground. We don't want to just say like, okay, I'll, I'll stop thinking those thoughts, which is a lot of times what people do, right? They take the approach of, okay, that's toxic. I'll stop doing toxic things. Number one, that, that, isn't a, that isn't how we learn. But number two, it's not enough to be neutral, right? If, I have, if I've got a negative five, if I have a deficit of some sort, yeah. it's not enough to just be at zero, I need to build something new. So I need to be a positive five, for example, right? I need, I need to build something else in that place. And so reframing the way of whatever it is that you're thinking about, when you have a specific toxic thought, you have to identify it. So let's, I'll just give it, I'll just use an example here. Sure. I'm using the toxic thought of, you know, I shouldn't have a lot of people struggle when they're going no contact. A lot of people mm. struggle with the ability to do so, right? I called him, I texted him or her, I, whatever. I've, I've contacted the narcissist after I told myself, you know, five times, 10 times, whatever. I'm not going to do that anymore. Now I sit and think about it. Why can't I stop talking about oh, talking to this person? Why did I do that? What, you know, all of these things. The first step is to stop the chatter, right? Recognize, hey, I'm doing toxic rumination. Let me stop. Take one part of that thing. I shouldn't have contacted the narcissist. Okay, start breaking it down. Why did I contact the narcissist? I was lonely. I'm. I was feeling uh, emotional about something. You know, I Ang saw come angry, up. angry, upset. Yeah, whatever, any kind of thing. It doesn't matter. You identify what that was. You continue to do this process five times. It's called the five levels of why. That will lead uh, you to the actual root of what is going on. And this is different for everybody. But like some examples could be, you know, I I'm. I have a deathly, uh, I'm deathly afraid of being alone my whole life. I right. crave, I crave attention, even if it's mm -hmm. toxic attention, whatever yeah. it is, right? So I identify the root cause, and then I'm able to actually start doing something to address that. If I try to, if I try to do something different at the first why, okay, I was feeling emotional, and then I'm, I was like, but it, you know, this tends to lead to more toxic rumination, which is. You know, but it's his fault or it's her fault that I, I feel this way and that I was doing this. It starts to go back into that cycle. That's why you go five levels down before you make a plan on how to address the behavior. Because if you just try to address just the initial behavior, 
it, it isn't going to take effect. It's not going to build anything lasting. So a person has to make sure they have the appropriate response to any given situation. But they can't do that if they don't understand why they're having a knee-jerk reaction to dealing with a narcissist. If they have no idea as to why. Right. And actually, there's a difference between responding and reacting. And most people are just reacting. That what people fail to understand about narcissistic abuse is that a lot of this becomes programming. Again, you're abusing yourself. The narcissist doesn't need to anymore. You're doing it for him or her. So what? Right? So what? So what you're saying? The programming. The programming can get started by the narcissist, but we could end up picking up the mantle yes. and continue to reprogram ourselves from something mm -hmm. we really need to get away from. You. You That's have a. Right. Uh, you have uh, you've enlightened us a great deal. We are literally going to have to take a commercial break. We have gone 41 minutes. I know yeah. everybody else is still is still coming in, but uh, I refuse to take uh, up the, the doc's uh, time all day. There, are, you you need to you need to be able to have like a, a, a Zoom live and just like be able to talk to a bunch of people more than just what I have here right now. Uh, I just have to tell you this, the congratulations that went on the screen when we were talking about oh, you getting in, you. getting in, get, I'm, I'm scrolling back, I'm looking back at them, there's just, uh, uh, Sarah, I just have to tell you who they are, uh, Sarah Lopez uh, says, oh my God, congratulations, I am so happy for you, uh, you got hearts, uh, Mommy J9 says, congrats, Doc, uh, Sylvia, uh, congrats, uh, uh, bear with me, Doc, because I have to do this every time this person comes on, a very loyal uh, watcher of the show. Leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost uh, says congratulations to you as well. Others have joined uh, all this time that we've been talking. Uh, you talked to Sylvia about what you just mentioned, and she wanted you to know that she said thank you with a heart uh, that you helped her there uh, in Good. this moment. Um, uh, you've got uh, they flip things over us or over on us uh, is what someone mentioned as well. We're going to take a commercial break. Uh, hold on a second. I got a, one more thing. They just typed in, I have a friend and an ex. Uh, we'll be more than happy to talk about that and much more when we come back. You were not nervous at all, were you? Me? No, I'm yeah. not. I'm doing it. <laughs> you, are, yeah. you, are the, you are awesome. Seriously, you are truly awesome. Uh, we have learned a great deal. Uh, others are still typing and putting things there and joining. Uh, we are going to be back, everybody. You kind of know how it works here. Uh, this free TV and free education is for you uh, here on Narc Abuse TV Network. It's more than just talking about narcissism that we're doing today. We're really focusing on recovery and uh, doing some emotional excavation of stuff that needs to be done so that you can move on. But uh, our, our doc here is uh, taking the lead in that. Angel, thank you so much for the first segment. Coming back, everybody. Second segment. We'll be right back. Thanks.